a oh well can you hear me guys me escuchan creo que sí creo que sí se ve hello teacher good evening good evening hello Give me a momentito. Let me see. Thank you for joining, guys. Good evening. Welcome and thank you for joining. Remember that. Good evening. Remember that today we finish section number four, right? And we're going to move to section number five tomorrow. We are completing some exercises, but don't worry, I will cover you know that information later too. Okay. I already have, you know, the platform ready. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the exercises in section number five. Don't worry. Okay, we will resolve them. I'm going to pass the attendance. Okay, voy a pasar la lista, así que solo denme un momentito. Ay, me salí. Vaya, chicos, voy a pasar entonces la lista. Ok, denme un momento. Aquí está. Comencemos entonces. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez, ¿no está por acá? Present, teacher. Present. Thank you. Eh, Ana Cecilia Romero de Domínguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Permítame. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Fernando Portillo Rivas. Carlos Fernando Portillo Rivas. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Present. Cristina. Gracias, Cristina. Perdón. Damaris, or Damaris, perdón, Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Gracias. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Gracias. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Good evening teacher. Present. Thank you. Good evening. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. I am here teacher. Thank you. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present. Thank you. María Griselda de la Paz Zamora. María Griselda de la Paz Zamora. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Miguel oh, Arsenio. Gracias, Miguel Arsenio. Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. Rufino Amílcar. Hernández Linares, ¿no? Sandra Janés Vázquez Cortés. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Present. Gracias, Wendy. ¿Alguien más que haya entrado mientras estaba pasando lista? Hey. Eh, espérame que no veo quién es. Carlos Fernández Portillo. Ah, Carlos Fernández Portillo. Thank you, Carlos Fernández. There you go. Ok, thank you very much. Aparte de Carlos Fernando, ¿alguien más que me haga falta? Bye. Perfect. Entonces, thank you very much for joining, guys. And we're going to continue with 
the resolution of the exercises, ¿verdad? I know that some of you have questions related to, um, to the platform, ¿ok? Especialmente en la sección 5. Lástima, ¿verdad? Que, que, los, um, que los ejercicios, es, eh, los últimos fueron los más complicados, haber tenido más tiempo, pero igual vamos a, a ver otra vez todos esos temas, aunque los estemos hablando ahorita, siempre los vamos a ver. ¿Verdad? Because we have to complete, you know, all of it. Bye. Entonces, I'm going to move to section number five. ¿Verdad? Eh, ahí está el cuatro. Permito. Bye. Me voy a ir en orden porque creo que en todos tienen preguntas. Así que este creo que ya lo hicimos, ¿verdad? Ese ya lo hicimos, ¿verdad? 5.2, ajá. Ok. Yes, uh, teacher. Very good. Entonces, ahora nos vamos al 5.7 y después 5.10. Bye. Entonces, tenemos acá en 5.7. Creo que es también el que pedían ahí en el WhatsApp. Quiero ver. Sí, es el mismo, ¿verdad? Supongo. Yes, teacher. I yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Bye. Entonces, acá no tenemos... Me... ¿Perdón? No, 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 nada, teacher. Ah, ok. Eh, entonces, vamos a ver instructions. Add tag questions to these statements. Remember, if the statement is affirmative, the tag question must be negative or vice versa, right? Just type the tag question, no capital letters or periods are needed at the end, ok? Fíjense que los tag questions, uh, they are very useful. Okay, and I know that sometimes it's a little bit difficult, you know, to, to get the idea, but it's very easy, okay, and I will tell you how it works. Um, I'm going to show share with you some images, okay, for you to get the idea of what I'm talking about, okay, and it is that one, okay. The, those are the tag questions, shall we? Dame solo le voy a compartir un par de imágenes para, para más o menos presentar la idea. These are like the main ideas, ¿verdad? Son las ideas principales de los tag questions. So, how do they work? Well, I'm going to move here. I think they are almost at the end. Son preguntas de cola. De eso es lo que son tag, es una cola. Bye. Tag questions for opinions. The equivalent of the tag question, okay, in Spanish is el famoso verdad, right? So whenever I'm using tag questions, I have to make sure that I'm using it at the end. That's why they are called tag questions or preguntas de cola. Why? Because they go at the end of the sentence. For example, health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? Right? So if you see, let's go ahead and take one sentence out of context, okay? I'm going to take this sentence and I'm going to bring it here, okay? Health insurance is really expensive, okay? Isn't it? Now, over here, right, what I'm doing is that I am, this is just a sentence. Okay, because that's what it is. It's a sentence. Es una oración. But, but why do I use question tags? ¿Por qué uso question tags? Because I'm looking for assurance. Estoy buscando que alguien me diga si estoy en lo correcto o no. Es como diga, ay, ¿verdad que el, el seguro privado de salud es bien caro? ¿Verdad? Right? Ese, esa tag question que va al final, el famoso ¿verdad? But what do we have to know? El, el tag question, chicos, es relacionado al tense que estoy usando. Por ejemplo, 
This is simple, simple present of the verb be. The verb is is. If the sentence is in present, and if the sentence is in the affirmative way, then the question tag is going to be in the negative form. Siempre es al revés. Si la oración es afirmativa, entonces la tag question va a ser negativa. Si la oración es, es, es negativa, entonces la tag question va a ser positiva. Okay? Entonces, if you see here, right, I have another one. There are lots of criminals in the city, aren't there? Right? There are lots of criminals in the city. Aren't there? Entonces, ¿cuál es la, es la, el, 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 la, el punto gramatical? Es there is and there are. Entonces, al final, lo voy a dejar como forma de pregunta. There are lots of criminals in the city. Aren't there? ¿Verdad? Right? Next one. Dice graffiti. Sorry. Graffiti makes everything look ugly, doesn't it? Okay, doesn't it, right? ¿Por qué uso doesn't? Porque la oración está en presente simple y para ser negativa esta oración que tiene make, ¿verdad? necesito doesn't. Entonces, doesn't it, ¿verdad? Todo depende del tiempo que yo estoy usando. ¿Verdad? Si yo estoy usando presente, entonces voy a usar los auxiliares para presente. Es como que haga una mini pregunta al final. ¿Verdad? Por ejemplo, ahí les mandé en WhatsApp un, uno con verbo to be. También les mandé la parte en donde especificamos que si es affirmative sentence, ¿verdad? La question tag es negativa y si es negative sentence, la question tag es positiva. Y abajo les va otro, otra imagen en donde pues explica el cambio, ¿verdad? Que hay. Over here. Doesn't es porque la oración está en present simple. Aren't there porque la oración está usando there is and there are. Isn't it porque la oración está usando verb be. ¿Ok? What about the following? ¿Ok? Tenemos ahí colleges. Colleges should provide daycare, shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? Okay. ¿Por qué? Porque estoy usando should. Y aquí me vengo a hacerlo en forma de pregunta. Pero igual, la otra, en la otra clase también vamos a hablar más sobre eso. Now, having said that, ¿verdad? Habiendo dicho eso, Ahora vamos a ver acá si ustedes pueden realizarlo, ¿verdad? Me voy a traer, bueno, voy a duplicar esta para estarlo viendo acá también. Y también aquí voy a borrar esto porque estas son las mismas que están ahí, ¿verdad? Y vamos a pasarlas para acá y ustedes me van a ir diciendo su opinión, ¿verdad? Porque I would like to listen to you. I would, I would like to listen to... The way you would answer, you know, this um, this question, right? Or I mean, the the way you would make up this question tag. Voy a pasarme para acá para el 5.7. Okay. Entonces tengo la primera. Vamos a identificarlo entre todos, okay? Dice, you can't escape advertising nowadays. ¿Cuál es la estructura que estamos utilizando acá? Negative. 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 Pero la estructura es can, ¿verdad? Can. can. Yes. Vaya, muy bien. Entonces, como es can, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿La oración es positiva o afirmativa? Negative. Es afirmativa. Es afirmativa. Negative. Es negative. negative. ¿Por qué? Porque aquí dice can't escape advertising nowadays. Entonces, por lo tanto, al final... ¿Va a ser afirmativo o negativo? Afirmativa. Afirmativa. Afirmativa, ¿verdad? ¿Y cómo voy a decir yo esa question tag al final? Can, can you? you? Muy bien. Can you? You can't escape advertising nowadays. Can you? Right. ¿Verdad? Ok. Lo vamos a dejar acá. 
Vamos con la número dos. Voy a quitar esto de acá. Bueno, no se lo voy a dejar porque se lo voy a compartir. Después. Vaya, there aren't enough gun controls. So, la oración, affirmative or negative? Negative. Negative. Negative, ok. Eh, what is the structure? Are, 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 are there? Vaya, pero la estructura there es, there is. There is. Y there are. There Muy bien. Are. Vaya. Entonces, al final, ¿va a ser afirmativa o negativa? Afirmative. Afirmative. ¿Y cómo nos va a quedar? There are. are, there. are there. Muy are bien. There. Are there. Are there. Correcto. Are there. Right. Lo dejo acá. Three. Noise pollution is a major problem here. Okay. So, question. What is this? No, creo que mejor lo voy a quitar de acá. Ay, Okay, noise pollution is a major problem here. Affirmative or negative? Affirmative. 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 Bye. What is the structure? Is. Is. O sea, el presente simple del verbo to be, ¿verdad? Present simple of verb Bye. Entonces, acá, eh, como es afirmativa, ¿cómo me va a quedar al final? Negative. 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 ¿Y cuál sería la opción? Aren't there. Aren't. Isn't. Isn't it. Porque está, aquí Isn't está en singular, ¿verdad? Dice, noise pollution is. Isn't it, ¿verdad? Yes, teacher. Muy bien. Entonces, me vengo para acá y lo dejo en la cajita. Isn't it. Ahora me voy con number four, ¿verdad? Again, there are more and more homeless people on the streets. Affirmative or negative? Affirmative. Affirmative. Affirmative, right? What is the structure? There is, there are. There yeah. is, there are. Muy bien, there is, there are, ¿ok? Entonces, ¿cómo me va a quedar al final? Aren't there. Aren't there. Aren't there. Aren't there. Right, very good. Out in there. What about number five? It says the sales tax should be lowered. Positive or negative? Affirmative. 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 Okay. Now, what is the tense? Should be. Should be. Should. Should. Should, right? Mm -hmm. Should is the structure. Muy bien. Entonces, ¿cómo me va a quedar aquí al final? Affirmative or negative? Shouldn't. Negative. 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 Muy negative. bien. Shouldn't, shouldn't be? Well, shouldn't, shouldn't it, I'm sorry. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't, shouldn't it. Muy shouldn't bien. It. Bye. Ahí está. Number six, it says... It isn't easy to save money these days. So affirmative or negative? Negative. Okay. Negative. Negative, right? What is the structure? Is, are, it. Okay, is, present simple. Present, present simple. Of verb to be. Present verb. simple of verb to be. So, ¿cómo me va a quedar al final? Is it? 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 Is it, right? Is it? Very good, okay? Because it's in affirmative. Now, let's take a look at number seven, okay? Downsizing is hurting the economy. Affirmative or negative? Affirmative. Affirmative. Very good. What is the tense? Present verb. Isn't it? Present simple. Present verb simple of verb to be. Muy bien, so, ¿cómo nos quedaría qué? Isn't it. Isn't it. Isn't it. Muy bien. Isn't it? Right, very good. Vamos a ver acá. Number eight, it says, the city doesn't do enough for straight animals. Okay, positive or negative? Or affirmative or negative? Negative. Negative. Okay, what is the tense? Verb to be. 
verb to be? Verb to be. Simple present. Simple present. Present simple. Present simple. Present simple de todos los verbos. Present simple. ¿Cómo nos quedaría al final? Doesn't does it. it. No, pues, no puede ser doesn't porque um, es afirmativa. Does. Does it. Does it. Does it. Does it. Does it. Ajá, does it, right? does Porque it. la oración era negativa y entonces la, la question tag es afirmativa. Vamos a darle aquí. Quiero ver si las tengo todas. Creo que sí. Veamos, vamos a enviarlas. Y ahí está, ¿verdad? As you can see, all the answers are correct. Quiero ver si las puedo copiar. Voy a copiar acá en el chat. Solo queda mucho espacio, pero permítanme. Uy. There you go. ¿verdad? Ahora nos vamos a pasar al number, number 5.10, que es un read it exercise. Aquí también habían preguntas, entiendo yo, ¿verdad? ¿Correcto? Yes, teacher. Bye, ok. Entonces vamos a ver la parte del reading, ok. Si no lo puede ver bien, puede irse a su manual y es la página 36, la última página, acaba la última página. And it says, how serious is plagiarism, right? Plagiarism. Scan the first paragraph of the article. What does the word, the word I'm sorry, plagiarism mean? So guys, what do you think? What is plagiarism? ¿Qué será plagiarism for you? Plagio en español, ¿verdad? Like a copy something. Plagio. Okay, very good. Like copying something from some place, right? Okay, very good. What else? Any other idea? Voy a pasarles aquí el reading en el chat para que lo tengan ahí. No se ve bien. Okay. Very good. So here we have different paragraphs. So I'm going to ask you to help me with the reading. Okay. Primero, pues, eh, lo leen ustedes y luego corrijo yo y lo leo, pues, una última vez. Vamos acá. Volunteer for the first paragraph. Volunteer, okay, Elizabeth del Carmen. Thank you, teacher. Recently, a barely teacher in Kansas, a state in the American Midwest, mm -hmm. main national, main national, and even international news. After Christine Pelton discovered that 28 of her 118 students have plagiarized. Plagiarized. Uh, plagiarized. Parts of a major project. She gave them failing or failing grade. Failing. Failing. Great. Although this was the school policy, the students, parents complained. Mm -hmm. The school board direct Mrs. Pelton to change the uh, punish, punishment. Mm -hmm. 
They told her that 600 points should be taken from the offen offenders. Rather, rather that the entire, entire 1,800 points. Mrs. Belton res resigned in protest. Okay, thank you very much, right? Yes, resigned. So that means she quit, right? At the beginning, we say recently, right? Recently and biology, biology. Thank you. What about paragraph number two? Who can help us with paragraph number two? Madeline, thank you very much. I'm going to, le voy a marcar aquí, okay? Well, um, why did why did this become such a significant? How do you how do you pronounce significant? Correct, significant. Mm -hmm. Significant story. Perhaps it is because so many people feel struggling about what is right and wrong, although the incident may soon be forgotten. It raised some important questions. What is plagiarism? How serious is it? Okay, thank you very much. Plagiarism, right? Plagiarism. What about Plag yeah, what about this part? Okay, volunteer to read the next part. Bueno, we can leave it like this, chiquitos. Next. Okay, Byron. <laughs> The simplest form of plagiarism occurs when someone copies material without giving credit to the source. However, there are also more serious forms, such as when a student pays someone else to write an essay. Essay. Very good. Essay, okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, actually, that's the, the, the definition, right? What is plagiarism? Plagiarism is a situation that occurs when someone copies material without giving credit to the source. Ese es el problema. Que cuando se comete plagio, no solo se copia, sino que no se le da el crédito a la persona, ¿verdad? Que originalmente lo, lo escribió. Ok, eh, Griselda. Ok, teacher. Some people claim that copying is necessary to do well in school. They have realized that their own words are not as good as someone else. Another common argument is that everyone does it. So it's not a big deal. In fact, is has been learned learn that even some highly respected mm -hmm. theorists, including Martin Luther King, in have in have players players it plagiarized plagiarized. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this word realized, right? Realized and plagiarized. What okay. about the next one? Thank you. What about this one? Volunteer for the next one. Uh -huh. Who's next? Nobody? Vale, pues está bien. I'll read it, okay? Uh, but this time I'm going to read from the very beginning. Voy a leer desde un inicio, okay? So we can uh, check the different different sections. Okay, so recently, just escuchemos, ¿verdad? Vayamos leyendo ahí sí con la mirada y vayamos chequeando uh, palabras, ¿verdad? So recently, a biology teacher biology, right? Remember, recently a biology teacher in Kansas, a state in the American Midwest, made national and even international news. 
after Christine Pelton discovered that 28 of her 118 students had plagiarized parts of a major project, she gave them failing grades. Although this was the school policy, the students' parents complained. The school board directed Ms. Pelton to change the punishment. They told her that 600 points should be taken from the offenders rather than the entire 1,800 points. Ms. Pelton resigned in protest. Why did this become such a significant story? Perhaps it is because so many people feel strongly about what is right and wrong. Although the incident may soon be forgotten, it raised some important questions. What is plagiarism? How serious is it? The simplest form of plagiarism occurs when someone copies material without giving credit to the source. However, there are also more serious forms, such as when a student paid someone else to write an essay. Some people claim that copying is necessary to do well in school. They have realized that their own words are not as good as someone else's. Another common argument is that everyone does it, so it's not a big deal. In fact, it has been learned that even some highly respected figures, including Matthew Luther King Jr., have plagiarized. Although some people find reasons to justify plagiarism, others feel the issue is clear-cut. They feel it is morally wrong and considering stealing, a theft of ideas rather than money. These people believe that students who plagiarized benefit unfairly. They receive a better grade than they deserve. So what about the incident in Kansas? Was the original punishment too severe? Do teachers have the right to tell students and parents what is right or wrong? Ms. Belton would probably say that the job of a teacher is to do exactly that, okay? So, wow, well, actually, I, I, I really like, you know, the reading because, well, nowadays with artificial intelligence, it is going to be even more difficult to identify when students, you know, commit plagiarism, right? Because artificial intelligence uh, allows you to get lots of material done instantly, right, related to a topic. So it could be, you know, something that can help us to fight it back or to increase it. O se incrementa o podemos, pues, combatirlo de una mejor forma. But that is, you know, uh, that depends on the, on the users. Voy a borrar todos mis dibujitos. Preguntas, chicos. Eh, acerca de alguna idea, si es de vocabulario, podemos usar lingüe o también podemos usar eh, word reference, ¿verdad? Acostumbrémonos a usar word reference, acostumbrémonos a tener siempre lingüe y word reference a la mano para contestar, para buscar palabras de vocabulario, ¿ok? Así que, questions, guys. Bye. Me imagino que ese ejercicio es el que ustedes tienen acá. Vamos a venirnos para acá. Que es este. ¿Verdad? Aquí está todo el reading. Si usted se mete aquí se ve más clarito. Bye. Entonces, luego dice, the teachers, well, I'm sorry, no leí las instrucciones. Instructions, read the article, then number, the, then number these sentences from one. First event, creo que aquí se equivocaron, is first event to six, last event. Type the number in letters. No capital nor periods are needed. Okay, so just be uh, careful with that. No capital and no periods are needed. Comencemos. Number one, the teacher's story appeared in national news. What number of event is this? 
Recordemos que estamos ordenando los eventos. Y es del 1 al 6. The teacher story appeared in national news. Number six, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right, vamos a escribir acá six. The teacher gave the students failing grades. Number two. Number two, muy bien. Two. Vamos a escribir number two. The students' parents were angry. Number three, teacher. Number three, dicen por ahí? Yes. I know. Okay. Ahí está. Eh, the teacher left her job. Number five. Okay. The group of students cheated on an assignment. Number one, teacher. Okay. And the school board told the teacher to change the scores. Number four, teacher. Okay. Very good. And there we go. Right. Ahí está. Por si quiere copiar, ¿verdad? El, el orden. Preguntas, chicos, questions about this? Teacher, I have a question. In the in the exercise number five C, join the sentence. I I try to to do to do the exercise number five and I can't do it. Mm, okay. Vamos a ver. Porque ese, ese se los copié directamente de exacto. Pero sí, tiene que copiarlo but... sin nada, solo, o sea, yo les agregué ahí un número y el punto, tiene que ser sin nada, sin el número, sin el punto, sin el espacio, solamente la oración, desde executive hasta fill. Mm, I try in, in, again and in, in I, I don't know, I, I didn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Vaya. Vaya, preguntas al respecto de ese ejercicio para pasarme al, al que me pregunta Grisel. No. Vaya, perfecto. Ok, let me go there. Me voy a pasar para el... Me dijo, ¿cuál era? Perdón, cinco... No, no era aquí. Era en el examen, ¿verdad? ¿O en qué parte era, Griselda? Dígame el número, porfa. Está en mute. Sorry, teacher. Es letter C, join the sentence. Pero es en el examen. Es the last, yes, in the exam. Is, I, I know it's the last exercise. Bye. Yes, I had the same trouble. Vamos a ver. Ahorita les reviso. Voy a duplicar esta para verla aquí. Con la número 5, dicen. Exactly, teacher. Ok. Vale, voy a pasar las posibles respuestas. Okay. Se las voy a ordenar aquí. Se las voy a copiar directamente de la plataforma. Son dos. Aquí hay dos. Eh, quiero ver. Prueben con esas. Esas son las mismas, solo que son una más, una opción más, ¿verdad? Prueben con esas y me avisan, please. Son okay, dos, ¿verdad? Teacher. Pero prueben ahorita, por favor, y me avisan. Ok. Aquí va una. Esta la otra. 
Solo que esta vez se las estoy poniendo sin números, sin punto ni nada. Solo la oración. Did it work? Funcionó. I'm trying, but uh, but I had with I had problem with all uh all items. I uh, had only one correct. The item. Let me check. Pero esa ya la resolvimos. Si quieren, le voy a marcar aquí dónde están. Se las pasé aquí en el grupo. Aquí. Ah, por favor. Si no, también puede ver. Creo que en la clase anterior, ¿verdad? La resolvimos. Eh, la clase del viernes, creo que fue. Thank you. You're welcome. Eh, Griselda funcionó. Hello, teacher. Mm -hmm. In my case, it's difficult for me because I I work in my cell phone. I try after the class. Vaya, perfecto, no okay. hay problema. Thank you, teacher, for helping. You're welcome. Alguien más, chicos, que tenga preguntas de la plataforma? Recordemos que en este caso, pues. Es un poquito apremiante porque ya este viernes finalizamos, ¿verdad? El curso completo. Entonces, es importante que vayamos avanzando lo más que podamos. Por supuesto, no se preocupen que los temas los vamos a, a revisar siempre. Una vez más, ¿verdad? Para que podamos entender la idea principal de cada uno de ellos, ¿verdad? Así que, questions, guys? ¿Preguntas? ¿No? Bye. So I'm going to go back here. I have a question. I have a question. Ah, uh, dígame. I forget when do we use that and who. Okay. In that cases. Remember, that and who can be used interchangeably, right? That and who can be used interchangeably with people. Okay. Estamos hablando de personas. We can use that or who. Pero that is going to be for uh, things, okay, animals, etc. Okay. Entonces, that y who son para personas. Y that solo para cosas, animales, etc. ¿Verdad? Ese es el contexto. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Quiero decir algo, hay que encontrar algo acá también que nos sirva. Preguntas, chicos. Quiero ver. No. Voy a aquí está. No, no hay algo. Básico que nos sirva para tener. Pero sí, ¿verdad? Who and that podemos usarla para personas, pero that solamente con cosas. Who es el único que es exclusivo para personas. Y ahí that puede ser ocupado en ambos casos. ¿Ok? Vaya. ¿More questions? No. Perfecto. Se me voy a pasar para acá. Vamos a cerrar esto. 
Vaya, con respecto a lo anterior, right? So remember that when we studied, okay, was, let me see, uh, defining, no, eso todavía no, eso es lo que vamos a ver. En la parte de defining and non-defining relative clauses. Vimos también la voz pasiva, ¿verdad? Ahorita vamos a revisar un poquito acerca de defining and non-defining relative clauses, que está relacionada con las preguntas pues, que hicieron ustedes el día de hoy. Now, coming back to the topic, right? When we talk about defining and non-defining relative clauses, I said two important things. ¿Verdad? Dije dos cosas importantes. ¿Cuál es esa? That eh, when we say defining, and I'm going to, and I'm going to, uh, voy a dejar aquí unas notitas al respecto, so you can remember that. Voy a poner acá. Sorry. Aquí, ¿verdad? Entonces, si yo tengo acá defining, defining relative clause. Y tenemos non-defining. Now, what happens here? ¿Qué es lo que sucede, Bye, chicos? Primero, yo este tema lo comencé cuando se los empecé a explicar, ¿verdad? Lo comencé con esta palabra. What is a close? What is a close? Who remembers what a close is? What is a close? Who remembers? Nadie? Bye. Entonces, a close is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. Eso es, ¿verdad? A close is a group of words that includes a subject and a verb. O sea, una oración. That's what it is. Now, here we have defining relative clauses. Okay? And when it comes to defining, okay, and non-defining, una, pues, nos da información relevante y la otra no. ¿Cómo así, Marce? Bye. Si yo tengo las defining relative clauses, right? This. Vamos a ponerlo acá abajo. This clause gives essential. Okay, essential or relevant. Relevant information. Okay, essential or relative information about someone or something, okay? About someone or something. And this information, okay, this information is, how can I say this information, or we need this information, ¿verdad? We need this information, aquí lo voy a poner, we need this information to understand, right? To understand, uh, what or who, you know, what or who is being referred to. A quien se refiere, ¿verdad? It's being referred to, okay? Si yo no tengo esa información, entonces va a ser bien difícil, ¿verdad? Eh, que yo entienda de qué estamos hablando. Entonces, that's the difference between them. That the other one, which in this case is the... Uh, a non-defining relative clause, right? I'm going to look over here for the definition so I can share it here. Uh, now, for non-defining relative clauses, right? Actually, uh, we used a uh, pronouns, right? In este caso es that or who, ¿verdad? Uh, and it gives Irrelevant information. This clause gives irrelevant information about someone or something. But that is the question. This clause gives a not essential or irrelevant information about someone or something. Okay? That is the difference, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando ya las estamos armando, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos armando... Uy, perdón. Lo voy a hacer otra vez. Se puede mandar. There we go. Bye. 
went, okay, we are working with them, as you can see, cuando ya las ponemos juntas, la parte de las defining relative clauses generalmente no llevan una coma. ¿Por qué? Porque ese who and that me están ayudando. A dialect coach, bueno, la, las dos oraciones que estoy poniendo juntas acá son a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. ¿Verdad? Estoy hablando acá dos cosas. ¿Verdad? ¿Quién, ¿Qué es un dialect coach y con quién trabaja? Entonces, al unirlas, ¿verdad? Yo obtengo a dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors on their accents. ¿Verdad? En este caso, pues, estoy dando una definición. ¿Verdad? Una definición de, eh, de cómo, ¿verdad? Lo voy a... Lo voy a eh, le voy a presentar esta información a la persona, es porque es algo que es correcto, ¿verdad? Ahora bien, luego tengo las non-defined relative clauses, we give further information about people, ¿verdad? A location scout finds places to shoot scenes, travels all over the world. O sea, estoy dando información importante, información que no es relevante o no tan importante. Pero si usted se fija, aquí la dejamos entre comas. A location scout who finds places to shoot scenes, travels all over the world. ¿Verdad? Es la forma en la que eh, voy, a, voy a dejarlo como defining or not defining relative clause. ¿okay? Acá tenemos cuatro oraciones. ¿okay? Vamos a ver, vamos a, a, a identificar ¿verdad? si son defining or non defining. Dice, do this sentence contain defining or non defining clauses? Add commas to the non-defining clauses. Then compare with a partner. Okay? Vamos a ver. I'm going to put them out here. Vamos a ponerlas acá. Y me voy a traer la primera. Dice, a stunt, oops, sorry. A stunt person is someone, sorry, someone who stands in for an actor, for an actor during dangerous scenes, right? So a stunt person is someone who stands in for an actor during dangerous scenes. What do you think? Defining or non defining relative clause? Defining or non defining? Is defining. Defining. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, it's defining. Defining. Right? Exactly. Why? Because I am given information or important information about this person. Okay. Let's take a look at the second one. Okay. It says a special. Oops, sorry. Special effects, right? designer who needs advanced, right? Advanced computer knowledge. Okay, um, often, right, often spends millions of dollars, right, on computer graphics, on computer, ya voy a corregir mis errores, mis typos, permítanme. So a special effects designer who needs advanced computer knowledge often spends millions of dollars, right, on computer graphics. So what do you think, guys? Is this defining or non-defining relative clause? Not defining. Exactly. Not it's defining. A, it's a non-defining. Why? Because the important information is that a special designer spends millions of dollars in graphics, right? Entonces, como yo tengo una non-defining relative clause ahí, voy a agregar las comas. A special effects designer, perdón, who, y aquí es donde empieza la relative, la non-defining relative clause, who needs advanced computer knowledge, right? Comma, often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. Muy bien, okay? Now let's take a look at number three. Number three. It says a stage hand, right? Oh, sorry. Se fue al revés. A stage 
hand, right? Is the person, is the person who moves the sets on stage in a theater, right, production? So a stage hand, right? It's the person who moves the sets on stage in a theater production. So what do you think, guys? Is this a defining or non-defining relative clause? Defining. It's defining. 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 Thank you. Right? It's a defining relative clause because I'm giving full information, right? Full definition of a, of a stage hand, okay? And let's take a look at number four, right? In number four, it says a movie producer, right? Who controls the budget, right? Sorry. Budget decides, decides how money will be spent, will be spent. Bye. Very good. So, a movie producer who controls the budget decides how money will be spent. So, what do you think, guys? Is this a defining or non-defining relative clause? I think it's defining. Defining. I defining. Well, in this case, right, we're talking about two things. Okay, so this is non-defining relative clause. Why? Porque dice a movie producer, comma, who controls the budget, comma, decides how money will be spent, right? So in this case, we have two different pieces of information, right? So a movie producer decides how money will be spent. And why Why would, would, would we leave, you know, why would we, would we leave... Um, would we, I'm sorry, leave out information or a piece of information in this in this way? Well, because people generally know that a movie producer is the one who controls the budget. Entonces, that is additional or irrelevant information that I am, I am adding. Entonces, lo relevante is that the movie producer decides how money will be spent, right? We already know that this person controls the budget, right? But in information here or new information is that this person decides how, you know, it will be used, okay? So this is, you know, on, on this particular uh, part. Tomorrow we're going to move to letter B. Mañana vamos a hacer este, que es el mismo que tienen en la plataforma. ¿Verdad que ese es el mismo? Yes. Bye. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Bye. Entonces ya mañana vamos a ir finalizando esa parte del... El tema, le voy a compartir esto. Ahí está. Bye. Perfect. And also, there is a reading también. Esta parte del reading la vamos a hacer mañana. ¿Verdad? Este ya lo hicimos. Sí, entonces este creo que ya no. Uh, but this one, we will do it tomorrow. Hooray for Bollywood, ¿verdad? Uh, have you ever heard about Bollywood? ¿Ya han escuchado de Bollywood? What is Bollywood? I don't know, teacher. Yes. It's like yeah. Hollywood yeah. in India. Exactly. It's like Hollywood, but in India, right? Mm. Hollywood is in the United States and Bollywood is in La India, right? Así de que we're going to read this article tomorrow. And also we're going to introduce, you know, the new section, okay, which is this one, okay, there should be a law, que es el que ustedes encontraron allí en la, bueno, ejercicio que ustedes encontraron allí en, la, en el número 5, okay, and sí, todavía tenemos tiempo, vamos a ver esto con calma. But tomorrow I will I will begin with algunas cosas sí ya la hicieron porque como fueron bastantes preguntas que hicieron sobre la sección 5, entonces... Se vieron bastante estos temas, ¿verdad? Voy a mencionar aquí de las personas que no me contestaron. Quiero ver. Um, wait. Que ya se me perdió la lista.
Eh, Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez está por acá. Juan Eduardo. Morán Rodríguez. Present teacher. Yes, ok, thank you. Eh, luego, Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Rufino Amilcar. Presente. Ok. Present. Thank you. Hola, right, chicos. Entonces, thank you very much for joining today. Ok, and I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, good night, teacher. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.